As we reported earlier, Governor Quinn and Illinois legislative leaders say they have made progress towards the state budget, but there still is no deal. The group met today in Chicago. House Republican leader Tom Cross says he doesn't expect one to pass until after July 1st when the new budget is supposed to take effect. Now, some activists say there are ways to cut the budget. An editorial in today's Chicago Tribune listed these suggestions. Reform how the state pays for health care. Free state hiring and require state employees to take furlough days. Outsource more food service and janitorial positions instead of paying full-time employee benefits for those workers. And trim benefits for new state employees, making their pensions more affordable. So right now we're joined by John Tillman, CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute, and some of your recommendations helped to craft that uh, editorial today. Uh, the Tribune did a great job with that today, and we're very excited about it. There are, finally, people are turning their attention to the spending side of the equation. Rather than trying to get into the wallets of taxpayers, it's time to focus on some spending reforms. The approach we took was very simple. Governor Quinn is asking for $3.2 billion in a tax increase. So we said, well, what could we do instead of raising taxes in the height of this recession when people are looking for jobs and tax increases kill jobs? How can we reform spending? We came up with a variety of sort of a smorgasbord of choices. For example, you could stop uh, taking income taxes in and then giving 10% of that right back out on a per capita basis to local governments, that would save $1.2 billion. Public employees on average make about 12% more than people with similar jobs in the private sector. If you cut public employee pay by just 10% temporarily, that would save a half a billion dollars a year. Another example is Governor Quinn. He says it's a crisis, but he's asked for $980 million, that's almost a billion dollars, of new spending over 2009. We would flatline that number and keep it flat. That saves another billion dollars. Uh, and the rest of the governor's agencies, if they took a 10% cut, I'm sure that most of us think that in government you could find one dime out of every dollar in inefficiency that could probably be cut. That would save That'd another $642 nice. million. Dollars. Those wow. are just some examples off the top of Can our head. Can that fill the whole budget gap, though, all uh, these suggestions? Well, the, the key is to fill the, the income tax gap, if you will. He's looking for $3.2 billion. They like to talk about the 11 or $12 billion budget gap, but that's actually a way to sort of create a red herring. The question okay. is, what can we do to not raise taxes in the face of, rece of the recession? If you cut spending by $3.2 billion, that takes us roughly back to about the same spending as 2006. Then Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Quinn was not talking about laying off police officers, laying off teachers. They weren't talking about putting foster children on the streets. Everything was fine in 2006. Our population is just about the same today. So this is a reasonable, rational way that our goal was to how can we do this without raising taxes and still provide core government services for those people who need it, especially in this difficult time in this program. John, one of the things that gets in my craw, and I asked Jack Connolly about this earlier, pork barrel spending. So here we have the governor threatening a doomsday budget. We've got like $3.1 billion of pork barrel spending that was recently passed that's a part of this budget. So where do you see that going? Well, I see that there's been outrage about that. How can you, on the one hand, say that we're in a financial crisis and ask taxpayers who are already overburdened, having a hard time making their mortgage payments, to reach into their wallet for $3.2 billion? At the same time, you have $3.1 billion in pork barrel spending. Mm -hmm. It's an outrage, and I think they're getting phone calls on it, so I think we might see some changes there in some of those programs. Thanks for coming in tonight, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Right, appreciate it very much. Here.